It's time for the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. On this edition of the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast, we're wrapping up another exciting week of NFL playoffs action. We have the national championship game, Houston Astros in their cheating scandal, and so much more. Make sure you stay tuned for another exciting episode coming up next. I'm glad you connected. This is Dave Johnson, voice of the Washington Wizards. You have connected to the right place because you are listening to my man, Josh Kirby, on Sports Podcast. All right, mixing things up on this edition of the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. It's going to be a fun one indeed, but before we begin, we're part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network. We are brought to you by Route 11 Ships. Make sure you find a bag today inside your local Martins, Food Lion, and Giant stores. We're also sponsored by PM Plus Reserves. As always, a big thanks to Dave Johnson, JR Beats Official, and MPT Now Productions. Now on to episode 69 of the Josh Kirby on Sports podcast. All right, mixing things up a tad bit today, welcoming you back inside the podcast. Um, we have two guests on two separate days. Tonight, I have Carlos Martinez with us. Um who I, I have not seen in forever. We go way back, and um, he's covering. He's part of the team now. He's part of our – he's uh, sort of like my producer in a way. Something like that. Yeah, a, a lot of great insight. Carlos, first off, welcome to the team. Uh, Thanks pre- for having me. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, appreciate you uh, coming on. We have a lot to talk about with Carlos. And then on the other end – of our break, we will have Dan Dembski back with us. Dan was unable to come on tonight, so he will be on tomorrow. We are recording this segment Wednesday, January 15th. So once again, Carlos, thanks for coming on. A lot of exciting action that we have to talk about both with you and with Dan. Um, yeah, so a lot, a lot has been happening. Lately. A lot has been and happening. We got so a big sports weekend coming up. Oh yeah, most definitely. It was exciting. But first off, tell us a little bit about how you got into the whole production and graphic design business. Oh, you know, just boredom. Just started messing around with stuff, and there you go. It started off, uh, you know, a lot of people know SHS Graphics, and there you go. That's how I got into all that stuff, and now here I am just kind of helping out this pod, and, you know, we got a lot of big things coming up, and, well, you know, it's a new phase for this podcast. Yeah. It's a new phase, and let's yes. just say things are... I'm excited. Things are going to get ramped up. I'm excited. This is uh, big breaking news here on the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast, so very excited for that. Um, le- Let's just dive right in. We have a lot to talk about. Um, Divisional round of football. I sort of want to get uh, thoughts from both parties here, starting with you, Carlos. So let's start off with the Minnesota-San Francisco game. San Francisco won 27-10 to in this game, and... um. Minnesota, they just did not have uh, the pop they had in the last game. I I just didn't think Minnesota was that. I just think Minnesota just got out coached. Yeah, like defensively, their how their offensive coordinator got that Cleveland job compared to uh oh, um, <laughs> their the San Francisco defense for uh defensive coordinator is beyond me. Considering that he got completely out coached. In that game, I mean, San Fran or San Francisco literally just dominated this whole game. Minnesota gets that great touchdown from Stephon Diggs, but then that offense just pretty much disappeared from then on out. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, you you're looking here and you see like the rushing yards. Dalvin Cook only had 18 yards rushing. I mean, it was terrible, and uh, I, I, that's not how you win a playoff game. So, um, I it, it was very sad to see after the Vikings um come back upset over the New Orleans Saints, but still just. A uh, very it was a close game at the start, but San Francisco just had way too much overpowering. Tevin Coleman rushed for 105 yards. Raheem Mostert 58 yards. The whole team 185 yards rushing. Jimmy G had a 131 yards in the air with he one touchdown. He did touch have that de- really bad interception though. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, Jimmy G just pretty much had control of that game the whole entire time. And then Kirk Cousins, man, just – I mean, he, he gets the monkey off his back in New Orleans, wins his first playoff game, but he does the whole you like second. that again. Uh-huh. But it's just like – and uh, a take that like has been going around is like, why are you saying you like that after winning just the wild card? Like, you want to do that when you're going to win the championship because now it becomes basically a meme, which it already was as it, as it is when he said it in Washington. And now – you you come up real short here in San Francisco. Don't it's not really that competitive of a game, and you know, and Richard Sherman picks you off and goes, uh, "You like that?" And <laughs> just golly, man, right in his face, right in his face too. Yeah, the disrespect. <laughs> I love Richard Sherman. <laughs> yeah. Um. The next game. Uh. We're moving on from that one. Tennessee and Baltimore. The Baltimore got game shot. that nobody predicted. Everybody thought yep. Baltimore was just going to do what they do because they looked incredible in the regular season, and then they just come in and just Lamar Jackson, man. Just I don't know, man. It's just like in the playoffs, he just can't. He can't do it. All on his feet, Lamar Jackson, 143 yards rushing, 365 yards passing, but two interceptions. When you look at his numbers, like they look, decent. you would think if if I told you Lamar Jackson's gonna pass for 365 yards, he's gonna run for another 143, you would sit there and think, oh, Baltimore dominated this game. They did what they normally do, but then it's just, I don't know. You know, they they didn't get much out of Mark Ingram. Which he, he did not look like himself. He was all season. He's been a very he's been very exciting to watch. Uh-huh. He's been explosive, and I just think they might have rushed him too fast from that calf injury. And but then you look on the other side, Derrick Henry, thirty carries, one hundred and ninety five yards, averaging six point five yards a carry. That dude is he's he's getting hot at the right time of the year. The Titans are hot right now, and they're the team I. They're the team you don't want to face right now. And, I mean, Baltimore just – it was just disappointing. It was very disappointing. Baltimore, they had a perfect uh, fourth down conversion rate and then could, into the could season. And they could convert all They game. went 0 for 2. Like, and, I, I mean, they only scored 12 points in this game. As you see, they only scored six points in the second half, the second quarter, and six points in the fourth quarter. Not even a t- yeah. There was a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, it was a touchdown, me, but, but then they went for two. Yeah, and did not yeah. get it. Yeah, but I, I mean, there were so many missed opportunities oh, at a the lot. end of this game. A lot, and Baltimore just ended up having to punt or going for the fourth down in situations where I didn't think they should have. Like, if you don't um, make the fourth down conversion once, I would not go for well, it. Well, it's just like again when they went for it all season long and they converted on it so it's like they have the play you know to do it it's different in baltimore's case in baltimore's case of fourth down than compared to like houston who just their fourth down go fours were just they did not make sense at all yeah but baltimore has that track record already of like they can convert on fourth down they did it all season so it's like you know they just didn't come out I feel like that by that time off, they basically took those two weeks off. Yeah, it was two weeks, yeah. And I just feel like it kind of messed with the synergy of the team. They did not look like themselves. 
they, yeah, and they this didn't look like themselves. And this isn't the first time this happened. This happened last year with the Chargers and the Ravens. The Chargers going to the Ravens, and Lamar Jackson just couldn't do anything. Oh, he that was, was but that was also Lamar. So Lamar didn't even have that full season under his yeah. belt yet. So, like, going into this one, he had the full season. He's basically everybody's locked to be MVP. But he just – it just feels like in the playoffs, like, he just kind of just – Lays an egg. Yeah. And it just, it sucks because he's very exciting. But he's still a pretty young quarterback. And oh, I, he'll get, he'll get it figured. I have no doubt in my mind Lamar Jackson's going to get it figured yeah. out. He's going to be a dominant force in this league for a while, I imagine. Hopefully, if he can stay healthy, which is always the main thing. Can he stay healthy with his style? But, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I have no doubt in my mind. He'll get it figured out. I feel like they're going to definitely come with a vengeance next year again. Um, just because they're going to want to prove that, you know, we can do it in the playoffs. Yeah. That we're not just that regular season team. Yeah, absolutely. We're not the Houston Rockets of the NFL. Absolutely. So that was the Saturday slate. Moving on to the Sunday slate. Houston up 24 to nothing on Kansas City. Jeez. And Kansas City just they, roared. Oh, roared my on back. goodness. Kansas City. My goodness. 21 to nothing. You got 28 to 3 in the second quarter, 13 7 in the third quarter, and 10 0 in the fourth quarter. Did you see what uh, happened, Houston? You let off the gas pedal. Did you see the video of when they were down? I think when they were down 20, it was either when they were down 21 0 or 24 0. There's a video out there of uh, Patrick Mahomes on the sideline. Like getting them ready to get, like getting them ready. Like we're oh about to do something God. magical right now. And they did something magical. <laughs> Fifty-one to thirty-one final score. One of the most craziest playoff games I've ever seen. Uh, it was, <laughs> oh my God! Just then, when you look at the stats, like Patrick Mahomes throws for five touchdowns, no interceptions, three hundred twenty-one yards on only thirty-five pass attempts, mind you, completes th- uh, twenty-three of them, uh, and then. It just – Travis Kelsey, man, 10 receptions, 134 yards. He caught three of those touch, three in a row, I feel like it was. He did the hat trick. And Travis Kelsey – it's between Travis Kelsey and um, Kittle from San Francisco. Uh, right now they're the top contenders for best tight end in the league right now. And it shows – having a great tight end, obviously we saw with New England through their dynasty with uh, Gronk. Like, having a great tight end is so key in having success in the playoffs yeah. because they're a huge body that is hard to cover. Yeah, most definitely. I, I mean, everything clicked after that 24, 24 to nothing down. They just come back. Something clicked, and that was one of the greatest. It was de- it, what really helped was that when it was 21 nothing. They were hurrying up to go. To, uh, Houston was hurrying up to go for that fourth down, and Bill O'Brien, who admitted in the press conference that he did not have a play ready, which is incredible considering that one he took a timeout, so you have that extra eighteen seconds. Uh, oh my gosh! And, like, th- that that was nuts. Also. But but it's just like it's in aren't it was fourth and one. You do not have a play to gain one yard. You like. One yard, one. Yeah, I mean, a y- run up the middle or something. Your whole playbook, or let the quarterback is, call But your something. whole playbook is to gain at least one yard. Oh so you can't. Gosh. You're sitting there telling me you didn't have a play ready to go. <laughs> but oh my god! On top of that, so that definitely started shifting the momentum because then they went for the field goal instead. Yeah. But then the other, the thing that really shifted it was when they went on that fourth down in deep in their own territory. I think they were on their they were in the 31 yard their own 31 yard line I yeah, think Yeah, I believe so. And they went for it then oh, being up 24 what was 24-7 at that point? Yeah. And then you you try a fake punt which the play made no sense. They should have checked out of that. Yeah. And just gone for the straight yeah, punt that and pinned them back. Yeah, that punt that was not a good call. It was not a good call. And so then that puts Kansas City starting off at your at your thirty one yard line. So of course they're gonna score. And then 
you know, just from there on. Then there was the fumble on the uh, kick return, which landed straight into – uh, I don't remember the guy's name right now, but into the Kansas, uh, the Kansas City. Players, yeah, he muffed like the straight, pun. like straight into the guy's arms, and he could have scored on that on that return, like if he would have just kept going, he uh-huh. could have cut the corner. Yeah, and but he didn't. But it didn't matter because Patrick Mahomes got them in there pretty easily, and he just Patrick Mahomes took it back this uh, this weekend from Lamar Jackson as the most exciting quarterback, young quarterback. I yeah. feel like. Because this is second year in a row, Patrick Mahomes gets Kansas City to the AFC Championship game, and yeah, and without New England there, I mean, if Tennessee doesn't shock well, the world, they were remember last year they were an offside away yep. from the uh-huh. from the Super Bowl. Yeah, if they don't mess up and you know yeah. jump offsides, well, if he Kansas no, the, City the, could redeem he, themselves. He, he didn't even jump; he lined up offsides. Oh yeah, and I'm just like, ah, oh, jeez. And then of course, you know that. Yeah, you know, the overtime pool. rules are de- – yeah, the overtime rules are just, you know, weird in the NFL. Yeah, but, I, I know And they didn't even too. give Kansas City a chance to respond, but, you know, it, he's back, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what Patrick Mahomes does. Well, they're just – lucky D. Ford is no longer with the Kansas City Chiefs. The last and final game, Green Bay and Seattle. In this game, I'll say it hands down, you know, Seattle just lost their – pop i mean they did not look good against philadelphia in the wild card game they looked decent against green bay but green bay in their first year with matt lafleur as the head coach makes it to the nfc championship game russell wilson i mean you're only throwing one touchdown a game that doesn't seem like a russell wilson stat to you um not really but this is this has been seattle all season yeah they've been They've been winning weird. It's always, you know, one, you know, one score games. You know, they they get behind and then they make the comeback. And that's exactly what was happening in this game. They were starting to make their comeback. And it's also the typical game for the Packers this year because the Packers, they'll get this gigantic early lead in the first half. And then in the second half, they just hold on for dear life. They scored 21 points in the first half. It was 21-3 going into halftime. And then they only score one touchdown in the third quarter. Yeah. And it was all Seattle from then on out. And then, of course, they iced the game by getting that first down to Jimmy Graham. But honestly, this, the Packers, yeah, they've been flying under the, the radar because, you know, they're winning ugly. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, they're winning. So it's like, it'll be interesting to see how they do against San Francisco. But yeah, this game was just a typical game for both of them. Seattle getting down and then trying to roar back and then green Bay getting the big league lead and holding on for dear life. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it just comes down to now can green Bay handle the challenge of San Francisco? Because well, we saw again earlier, you know, this year, they got, they, they got, they got demolished. Yeah, demolished if you can look up that score. Um, but, uh, I mean, Green Bay, um, it, it is the playoffs, granted. But I think it will be a lot closer of a game since it is the playoffs. But who knows? San Francisco could maybe stomp them again. But in the playoffs, I highly doubt that's going to happen. I feel like it's going to be a lot closer of a matchup. But Green Bay has to be ready for Jimmy G and the San Francisco 49ers because I know for a fact they'll be ready to play. Yeah, I mean, it'll just be interesting to see because, again, Green Bay this season, both times they went to California against the Chargers and against the 49ers. They both lost. They took those – they took – hard L's yeah like hard and Uh it'll be interesting to see how different it'll be this time um I I just I don't I don't know I I'm San Francisco's my pick to win this game but I just you you can't count Aaron Rodgers out yeah you yeah that's something I've learned you can never Count Aaron Rodgers out. You've seen him multiple times. Oh, this by the game way, the is score gonna... earlier in the year was uh, thirty-seven to eight. <laughs> so it's gonna they're gonna have to, there's Ooh. a lot of work to be done. Oh man, there I I'm sure on the news programs they're gonna be talking about that one. Before well, they're gonna be the start of that game. Yeah, they're gonna be talking about that earlier and like, game and just how 
what exactly is Green Bay going to do different? Because it's clear that they're not a West Coast team. Yeah. But this game, I think this is the later championship game, isn't it? Yes, it is. The AFC is first and the NFC goes second. But technically, you know, it's so it's 6.40 p.m. our time, but over there it's going to be 3.40 yeah. is kickoff time. So it's still technically going to be in the afternoon for them. We'll see how they really adjust to the time change and all that. And the weather change because obviously it's in California compared yeah. to Wisconsin. Uh-huh. Yeah, so – Here we have it, the AFC and NFC championships, Tennessee and Kansas City on the AFC side, and Green Bay, San Francisco on the NFC side. I will save my predictions till the end, but Carlos, what are your predictions? Well, like I said, the NFC, I got San Francisco winning. Uh, My thought is is that this is not going to be like the uh, earlier edition of this game, 37-8. I don't think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be a lot closer. But I just think San Francisco is just a better built team. Bosa is an animal, <laughs> and I would be terrified to uh, line up against him, um, which I wouldn't anyways. Um, and then the AFC side, that that one's tough because Tennessee, man, they're, they're hot right now. Uh, and Kansas City just – but Kansas City's hot too. Kansas City is – Kansas City's the favorite going into this game yeah. for sure because uh-huh. it's in Arrowhead. You know, Kansas City's those fans are absolutely nuts. Oh yeah, and they rock but, that stadium all the time. Oh yeah, I mean it's always you know the decibels, the decibel are like the decibel, you know, records always being broken between uh, Seattle and Kansas City. Yeah, so like those fans, it's, it's no joke playing there. Um, I'm going to go Kansas City, but I will not be surprised if Tennessee somehow pulls it off and does something incredible in which they beat every divisional winner uh, to get to the Super Bowl, where they beat the Texans the last week of the regular season. They beat the Patriots, the AFC East cha- uh, champs. They uh, beat the uh, Ravens, the North champs, and now they're about to beat um, – or not they're about to, but then they, they will have beat <laughs> Kansas City. If that the, happens, the that, they're shocking the world. They're shocking the world. And on top of that, you know, Miami's going to have to watch Ryan Tannehill play in a Super Bowl uh, when you guys just let Miami. him go. In Miami. Which oh my the storylines would just be absolutely hysterical considering that Miami gave up on him, which, you know, it was a business decision. He couldn't stay healthy in Miami. But, you know, he's doing the thing in uh, – He's doing the thing in uh, Tennessee, so uh, yeah. So my basically my Super Bowl, I'm pr- pretty sure it's everybody's hope is the 49ers and Chiefs. But again, I will not be surprised uh, surprised if uh, Tennessee somehow pulls it off and Derrick Henry maybe just is too much for this Kansas City team. Well, we will see on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Moving on, uh, more football. Um, the national championship game. Uh, Clemson falls to 14-1 and one after losing to the number one ranked LSU. What a game this was. What a game. It was a... L- l- let's just look at the Heisman Trophy winner for a minute. 31 for 49, 463 yards, and five touchdowns. Two less than what he threw whoa, 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 against whoa, Oklahoma. Whoa, 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 whoa. Six total, though. He scored six total because he scored that rushing touchdown. Yeah. So th- that's just passing. Yeah, that's just passing. But don't don't count him. Joe Burrow can run. <laughs> he is he is a mobile quarterback. Yes, and he it's is. going to be interesting seeing how his game transitions into the NFL. But this game was a heavyweight fight through and through, up until pretty much halftime. Then it just kind of just you could tell. Well, once that targeting call happened, yeah, that was tell, not a targeting. Th- that call. wasn't. I mean, it didn't, by, by the didn't. by the book, it is a targeting. Yeah, you, because like he hit with the crown of the helmet and all that. But I they they got to s- do something about that rule. Because I did not see helmet to helmet. It was. It doesn't have to be helmet to helmet in college. It's just if you hit them with the crown of your helmet, oh. it's considered a spear. Oh. Um. So that really hurt Clemson because that. That was their starting uh, linebacker. Yeah, and he was that was he, huge. He was the leader of that defense. That was huge, a huge loss. And you just saw from then on out, 
LSU just kind of took over. Uh-huh. And, I mean, they were starting to already take over, but that moment alone, really, you just knew, oh, their chances of winning this aren't that great right now, especially yeah. because that Clemson offense, they didn't show up, man. Uh, though, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, I can't put this on Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I think Trevor Lawrence is the future. I really yeah, do. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I, I mean, think whoever picks him up in the draft next year is going to be set for a long time. Um, but his receivers just kept dropping passes, and it was it it was rough seeing that because we all saw what he did to Alabama last year, how he pretty much dominated Alabama, um, and then we saw what he did against Ohio State, gets knocked out of the game for a second, comes back, leads Clemson on this huge comeback, and then he comes in here and throws no touchdowns, 18 for 37, 234 yards. And all three touchdowns that they scored came off of uh, rushes. Like tr- he scored one rushing touchdown. Yeah, but he didn't have a passing. He didn't touchdown have any pu- passing touchdowns. He didn't, he didn't have any interceptions, which is good. But when you see eighteen for thirty-seven, like a lot of those passes were dropped. And but Joe Burrow, man, just ah, God. Uh oh. Nope. No, that that that's not good. But um, anyways, Trevor Lawrence just seems like. Uh, he's such a positive guy from what I've seen, and I, I just think there's a lot of promise and a lot of future for this young man. Now, now, now tell me something, Kirby. Oh, my when you, when you When you look at Trevor Lawrence, do you not see a little bit of Hunter in him and Sminger? Oh, my God. Are we really talking about this? <laughs> uh, just, 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 just a serious question. Just Because I had this conversation with somebody the other day, and, and, and she said the same thing. She was like, does he not look like Hunter Ensminger? <laughs> I I don't really see it. I might have to take a closer look. There, there's some similarities. <laughs> just, just just take a good look one of these days, oh and my. you'll you'll see it. You'll oh see my! It. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see Joe Burrow in the NFL. He's obviously going to go to Cincinnati. Yikes! Um, I don't think Cincinnati can pass up on you. Them. Can't pass up on Joe Burrow. I mean, he's. At this point, he, for he's Cincinnati. he's being compared a lot to Brady. No, no, nobody can b- compare anybody to Brady. A college quarterback who what won I'm the saying, Heisman. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that like his like his style, his way of preparation, like not necessarily that he is Brady, but like he reminds him a lot of Brady, just more mobile. Reminds him a lot, but you cannot compare any college quarterback. Coming into the league to Tom Brady. Obviously not. Tom Brady's yes. the GOAT, but... Wh- whether you're a fan or not, Tom Brady's uh, the I'll, GOAT. I'm a Tom Brady fan. I love Tom Brady. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> if you're a fan or not, he's still the GOAT. Oh, he's the GOAT through and through. But he basically, I mean, Cincinnati cannot pass up on the chance to get this guy... The team, LSU really rallied around him this year. The whole state of Louisiana basically did. He's like their second son. And it was, I was rooting for Clemson, but it was nice to see his journey end that way, especially because nobody really, you know. He only lost two career games in his football career, high school, that was college. In his, well, who? Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. Oh, yeah. I'm, talk, I'm still talking about Joe Burrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a no, blooper. no, no. Yeah, tr- well, this is this is his first college loss. So yeah. he lost in the uh, in the state playoffs his la- his senior year in high uh-huh. school, and then he obviously goes undefeated his first year. Fit- first team to go fifteen and zero, goes fourteen and zero this year, and then lose. I mean, they came up against a better team in LSU. They were playing. At the Superdome, so basically it was a home, home game field for advantage. LSU. It was home field. It was it was home field. <laughs> the interesting stat is about LSU. They've won all, all four. Five, all, no, all I think it's five now, isn't it? I think it's five. Four or five. Yeah, all all their national championships were won in the Superdome. Yeah, which is nuts. Yeah, I. Wh- I mean, 
you're going to have a big crowd, and it's obviously home field advantage. But oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, but the last time they were in there was, what was it, that 2011, I think it was, when they yeah. played Alabama. That game stunk. Yeah. That game was really bad. Yeah, but uh, all around a great game. Uh, it was a good game. Um, it. All I'm saying is uh, don't count Clemson out. Trevor Lawrence, he's going to play next year. I know there's a lot of talk of him sitting out the whole year. He's not going to sit out. I don't see that kind of guy sitting out. Plus, it's for for his position, it's different sitting out a year. You're get, he'll get rusty yeah. if he sits out. If you sit out a year, you're done. Uh, and, In like, yeah, he's, go, he's obviously the consensus number one overall pick next year, no matter what. Um, so he could sit out and he could be the number one pick, but it just would not make sense for him to sit out and get all rusty and then try to get back. Cause it's different, be, uh, sitting out and trying to get back into game shape than already being in game shape throughout the season, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. But the, oh, what a great game that was a uh, great national championship. And just uh, don't count Clemson out. They'll, they'll, they'll be back next year for, yeah. for sure. And I would honestly bet on them winning it all again next year. Uh Oh, don't get, don't bet your, mind. don't, I mean, I, look, <laughs> we, we don't condone gambling, but if I was a gambling man, I would, I would put all my money on Clemson oh to win it all next year. Cause who 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 is there? Uh I mean Alabama might. Who knows? Wasn't it funny Nick Saban found his way to that national championship game? Well, uh, they <laughs> did. So, what year was it? It was the last year of the BCS when it was uh Florida State versus Auburn. He was there too. It's just what, how often is he off for the playoffs or the national championship game? It's it, not he, very often. He just wasn't happy with the Citrus Bowl. I could tell by his facial reaction. I didn't even watch. I, honestly, who watches the actual bowls anymore unless it's the playoff? Yeah. Not. I mean, yeah. unless like it's like your college team playing in yeah, that like, bowl game. Yeah, who cares about some of these bowls anymore? Well, I mean, just they, to get them a bowl game, you know? But it's just like. It mattered back with the BCS because it was a BCS bowl, so it yeah. meant it was a big bowl. But now with the playoff, it's like these bowls don't matter. The yeah. only thing that matters is if you're the ne- the four top teams, uh-huh. which is kind of which kind of sucks because like these bowls used to mean so much. It used to be so exciting, and it used to like push us through the whole like that whole like December into January of uh, push, but. They got they they got to explain this playoff, man. Uh huh. They they definitely have to. But that is um a discussion for another episode. Um, let's move on, Carlos, to what you love to talk about Ooh. the very best. And I actually brought you on for this reason. We are mixing it up a little bit more on the podcast. We're bringing in some UFC action. I, I'm gonna see how this goes. Uh, we're just I, gonna we're just gonna call this segment uh, "Fight Talk." Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't really know a lot about UFC. No, that's why you bring a person who yeah, knows the, about UFC. Sort of like yeah. a professional, but well, not a professional at all, <laughs> at I, all. Sort of, you not, know, not not really, not, not not even close. All right, well, somebody, I just know what I'm talking about. All right, well, l- l- let's hear what you have to say about this McGregor Cowboy main card on January 18th. Well, obviously, it's a big deal because this is Connor's comeback fight. He hasn't fought in since uh, October of, I think it was last year. No, not last year, two years ago, um, when he fought Khabib and obviously lost. Um, this is an interesting fight because this has kind of been a fight in the making for a while. Um, Connor and Cowboy have kind of been butting heads for a while. It's not necessarily a like personal rivalry. It's more of like, I mean, they've been keeping it pretty professional lately. The press conference is today, well, on Wednesday when we're recording this. So by the time this is released, the press conference would have already happened. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see. Connor has not won a fight since 2016 when he won uh, when he beat uh, Eddie Alvarez at UFC 205 yeah. in New York and became the first uh, champ champ double champ uh huh um he has not won since he lost obviously to Mayweather in 2017 
Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> was a, I mean, it, and yeah, it was boxing, but it obviously he, he didn't win, so that still counts as a loss. And then um, going into the Khabib fight, he basically was off a whole nother year, and Khabib is the consensus number one lightweight. No, he's undefeated. A lot of I've people heard, thought I've heard a lot of great things about Khabib. By oh, the he's way. a he's an animal. Uh, his style. He he's one of the last of like the one style type people where like he's just trying to uh, take you down and he's going to beat you up on the ground Mm -hmm. because you can't get up. Nobody has been able to solve that puzzle, but a lot of people thought maybe Connor could, but the thing about Connor going into that camp is he wasn't as motivated. You know, you just win a hundred million dollars off of the, you know, uh, Mayweather fight, you know, he, he he's living very comfortable, so yeah. it's it's hard for him to get up and get motivated. And he's admitted it lately in interviews that going into that camp, there were times he would not show up to practice and training and all that. So this is a different, this is a more motivated Connor coming in. He's obviously taken time off again. He had to deal with some, you know, he, some legal stuff. Um, all that's cleared up. He's back. Uh, and he's fighting Cowboy. There's this fight's at 170 though. This isn't a 155 fight, 150 pound fight. It's a welterweight fight. So basically, they're not cutting any weight. Yeah, they're basically just going in as as is. As is. Um, and this is just gonna be an exciting fight. They're both they're both strikers essentially. So it's gonna be a stand up fight. Connor's main knock has been that. If you take him down, that's how you that's how you beat him. That's how Khabib beat him. Um, that's how Nate Diaz beat him uh, in their first fight. He took him down, and Nate Diaz is a jujitsu specialist, so mm-hmm. he can he he got him in that. Uh, I think it was a rear naked choke, um, and but when Connor is when Connor's on like Connor is one of he's got that devastating left hand and from what Cowboy has said is he's going to stand and bang with him so we'll see man we'll see how Connor does i mean my obviously i'm a i'm a huge Connor McGregor fan so i'm going Connor but it will not surprise me if Cowboy Cerrone wins this fight considering in in the time span uh Cowboy Cerrone has the most UFC fights and Connor has like the least, so uh, it it'll be interesting to see. So for the fans who d- don't really know much about UFC on my podcast, um, can can you sort of go into depth about why there are different sections before leading up to the main event, which is obviously Conor McGregor and Cowboy Saran, because uh, like you mean like like the early prelims, yeah, prelims like the main l- car. like what? So basically, what? like so you do your early prelims because the UFC only puts on certain amount of events a year, so and they roster, they have like a bunch of fighters on the roster that they have to get fights, and it's just like a good way to start to build people up, but the main reason why they do like three segments is to start building up hype and anticipation for the pay-per-view, which is the main card, the top five fights. The one you have to pay for. The one you have to pay for. Um, the prelims are, are basically the fights to get you excited, to make you be like, Oh, uh, you know, I, I think I want to, I want to keep watching this. Let me, let me hand over my $75, <laughs> you know, to, it's not to watch cheap. This. It's not. It's not cheap, and you need an ESPN Plus subscription now. You can't just really, buy it. yeah. So, so it's not HBO anymore. It was never HBO. Oh, really? HBO was boxing. Uh, oh, UFC oh, oh, through oh. their w- produces their own stuff. They signed a deal with uh, with ESPN last year. Oh, um, okay. To that, so now that's why you see all the UFC events like their fight nights and stuff like that on. Uh, ESPN now. So four ninety nine a month plus your pay per view. Well, you have to still pay for the pay per view. So it's not like you pay four ninety nine and then you're yeah plus whatever yeah, yeah, you pay yeah. for pay per view. So and that's the only way you can get it now. You can't buy it off a of cable and all that. Now you have to have the ESPN plus. Subscription. I see. I see. Yeah. So a lot of interesting stuff. Um, hopefully we can keep this rolling when more fights roll around with you. But um, yeah, I mean, it'd probably be just like a one once a month segment where we just talk about the okay, big fight yeah, coming up. The UFC is so sparse, 
you know what I mean? It's like, it's it's not that sparse. Like no, they have I events mean, like every weekend, but like I guess it's it's more, not the big events. But it's, no, the big events only come every. They typically target the big events for, you know, summer and uh, November, and then the end of the year, and then the beginning of the year. Yeah. That's typically the time frame of when you're putting on when they're putting on their big fights. So. I mean, they got the next big fight coming up next month. John Jones, you know, uh-huh. fighting Dominic Reyes, who John Jones is obviously the consensus goat. Twenty-five and one for John Jones. That and one twelve and zero for Dominic Reyes. That one. That one is he. Sh- he should really be twenty-six and zero. Uh, but we can talk about we, that. We can day. talk about that next month because <laughs> right now this one's about Connor. It'll just be interesting to see if Connor comes back as the old Connor and the motivated Connor, the one who just ran rough shot in the UFC and just took over the whole entire game. That's the Connor we want back. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if he comes back and then Cowboys. He's just, he's just a fan favorite, man. He's got a huge following typical country boy. He's so fun to watch. And I'm just super excited for this fight. It, it, if, if there was ever a fight for you to start watching, this would be the one. Yeah, it, it's going to be a great one from the sounds of it from our UFC contributor, Carlos Martinez. That main card is on January 18th. This um, Saturday, 10 o'clock. In the morning? Oh, no. At I night. <laughs> yeah. <I'm>, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. That yes, was my Yes, in fault. the morning. First thing I want to watch is UFC. UFC. No. <laughs> no, that, that's soccer. That's 10 in the morning. Well, that's, that's English. And don't knock soccer. I love soccer, too. Oh, you do? Oh, I love we, soccer. We could get you on some soccer <laughs> stuff here I soon. Mean, you could, but I would have to start really getting back into it. I've kind of fallen off a little bit. What's your favorite soccer team? Uh, Barcelona. 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 Chelsea, baby. Uh, no, I'm playing DC United. Oh, I love DC United. Oh, you do? Oh, dude. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait. Well, I'm planning on going to a game this season. But. Dude, I need to get out to Audi Field. Oh, I need to go. I want to go see the DC Defenders. Which we will Dude. eventually talk about when the XFL launches. I, I, I mean, I, I've said this last week. I'm not sure how much I'm going to cover the XFL, but it's going to be interesting. Lower level tickets are only twenty bucks. Oh yeah, no, yeah. tickets are super affordable. Hey, how about it? Let, let's go to hey. a game. Well, we're going to go to a hey. game. We'll, we'll vlog it and we'll put it up. Th- that'd be channel. cool. <laughs> that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. But that'd be interesting. Carlos, thanks for joining us on the first half of. The podcast, um, when we return, I will be with Dan Dembski wrapping up the show, have a couple more exciting topics, and so much more. Stay tuned. The Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast, part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network, is sponsored by Route 11 Chips. Make sure you grab a bag today inside your local Martins, Food Lion, and Giant stores. And our new sponsor and fellow sports fans at PM Plus Reserves, providing reserve studies for homeowner and condominium associations in the Washington metropolitan area for the past 30 years. Make sure you check us out on all streaming platforms via the Mayo Please and the Josh Kirby on Sports podcast. You can also find the Josh Kirby on Sports podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, along with the Mayo Please on Twitter. Have any questions for the show? Feel free to shoot us an email at kirbyonsports at gmail.com. All right, we are back. Uh, Thanks to Carlos once again for joining us for the first half of this segment. Um, It is Thursday the 16th now, and we have Dan in studio. Dan, it's great to see you. We finally got you back in one last time before you make the five-hour trip with car accidents down to Blacksburg, Virginia. I like how you added time to that because that probably (laughs) is what it's going to be. Yeah, Yeah. most definitely there. You got to add in time on I-81. I'm not excited for that, dude. So we're basically going to get your thoughts now on these playoff games okay. because, uh, you know, mixing this up, as I said earlier. So we got Carlos's thoughts. We'll get Dan's thoughts because Dan's the legend. And we oh always, gosh, well, please. We got to get him on as often as possible. So um, <clears throat> right out of the gate, Dan, your Ravens, mm. your Ravens did not live up to the hype. Nope. Um sort of like last year when they lost to the Chargers, they got pretty badly upset, I, I wanna say. Mm-hmm. But 
yet again, the Ravens just did not look comfortable. Lamar Jackson didn't look comfortable. And, uh, I mean, Ingram, it felt like he didn't even show up to play. So, you're you're more of a Ravens fan than I am. So, uh, uh, let's hear what you have to say. Well, I mean, the Titans beat the Ravens in... They did it by the book the way that the way that you have to do to beat the Ravens. They stacked the box, dared the Ravens to run the ball, and essentially the Ravens abandoned their game plan early on in the game. Uh, they expected Lamar Jackson, uh, you know, he threw it 59 times. And I, I said this um, to several people, you know, they're not, that's not the kind of quarterback he is. That's not the kind of team they have. Um, he's not... You know, gonna st- he's not a gunslinger. He's not going to stand in the pocket all day and be able to throw it 59, 50 to 59 times or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> and they just they just cowered up, you know, and, and they just they didn't play well really in any phase of the game. And you got to give credit to Tennessee. They came and fired up after that huge upset over the Patriots um, in Gillette Stadium, mind you. So, you know, they, they, they had a lot of fire and a lot of energy coming into that game. And... Um, you know, I, I never like to say that we overlooked a team, but it's because I, I, I think deep down you never do, especially in the playoffs. But it just seemed that way to me. Um, you know, the Titans just did everything they had to do. Derrick Henry was unstoppable again. Our defense just could not slow him down at all. Almost another 200 rushing yards. He had 195 rushing yards. And, of course, the jump touchdown pass, which was the dagger <laughs> in my heart as a Ravens That was fan. a T-bell. Uh, that was, yep, Tim Tebow was one of the first people to do that, if if not make it uh, sort of famous. So, um, you know, it's I hear a lot of people blaming just Lamar Jackson. I don't think you can do that. I don't think it's fair. Um, it's fair to criticize some of the plays he made, but let's let's be fair here. I mean, they had about eight or nine drops, um, and a lot of those were either long plays downfield or they were at least going to be first downs. Um, so, you know, you, you take those out of the equation and I think you've got a much closer game or maybe even a tied game in that, in that certain, in that circumstance. Um, but another thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, that, you know, the, of course we talked, talked about the defense, uh, just couldn't stop Derrick Henry and, um, yeah, Derrick Henry is an absolute monster. He's, he's unbelievable. In, in the playoffs, unbelievable. he is ridiculous. And you know that was that was the thing for me coming into the game. I said, you know, we have to slow him down. We have to stack the box. We have to get pressure, and give credit to the, to their offensive line. They just they beat us at the point of attack. You know, they were knocking us off the line of scrimmage. They were just pounding us all game long, and and that you know that's that's their style of play. And uh, they did it against the Patriots, and they did it again against the Ravens. So. You know, obviously they're doing something right. I, I, I don't know if it'll continue against uh, the mighty Kansas City, uh, especially the way they're, they're playing offensively. But, you know, overall, I, I just think the performance was um, about as disappointing as you could, you could say, as you could uh, discuss. I mean, 12 points. Yikes. One touchdown. You know, it's just extremely, extremely difficult to – feel great about this team right now even though we went 14 and 2 and we accomplished so many things in the regular season Lamar Jackson's going to be the MVP I don't I don't think there's any any debate over that it's a regular season award he had the best regular season of any player broke many many records I mean he's he's the MVP but you, you know you just you would expect more from an MVP in a playoff game um, <clears throat> and of course one of the interceptions he threw was was off the receiver's hands. So, yeah, I mean, that's, the receiver should have had that ball. That shouldn't yeah. have been an interception. So, not all of it to blame on Lamar Jackson. And you're right. They it, abandoned the run too early in the game, and that's that's what killed him. I mean, that's that's what got him there. They yeah. had the the one two punch of Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards, and then you know let let Lamar do his thing. Of course, he had finished with 20 rushes, but a lot of those he was under under pressure and stuff like that, and he had to get out of the pocket. So. Um, you know, they weren't really designed runs, but they just, they seemed to panic early on in the game and, and they saw that, you know, Kansas or Kansas city, good Lord, where's my head at right now? (laughs) Tennessee, um, you know, was, was prepared for the run and they said, okay, I guess we got to throw it. Um, 
and throw it a lot. And Lamar's just uh, – he's not developed enough as a passer, I don't think, yet to be able to throw it successfully 59 times. And, of course, if you throw it that many times, you're, you're probably going to th- throw an interception or two either way, no matter who the quarterback is. And uh, also, you got to give credit to Tennessee's defense. I mean, they just got so much pressure – the entire game on Lamar Jackson and, and forced him to make a lot of bad throws and, and not and sacked him too several times and just got pressure on him and just flustered him and again I think it goes back to you know the the offensive coordinator um uh, Greg Greg Roman just kind of getting away from what got him there I mean they they panicked early on in the game when they well, like like I said when they saw that Tennessee was gonna load the box and say we dare you to run the football because we're gonna be able to stop it so. Um, that opening drive of the second half I thought was a good opening drive. And, of course, they had the fourth down. They went for it twice during and the game and, and did not get it. I believe they were both on the Ravens' side of the field. So, you know, I think I think you have to take the points. You have one of the best kickers in football. For, yeah, for, for, for and they, they missed out on two scoring opportunities because they decided to go for, go for it, it on fourth down. And questionable play calls on those, I mean, you're, you're looking at – um. The little, the weird Lamar Jackson play where he, he kind of hesitated on that one fourth and one and tried to sort of go off tackle and then try to come back. And so that was strange. And then um, I'm trying to think of the other one. It might have been a um, just a straight-ahead draw. Yeah. And that, that was stuffed. So, you know, they're... The interior, their line was just ready, and they they watched their film and they knew what they had to do. But the Ravens really didn't run off tackle, which is what they've had a lot of success doing. Like I said, especially with Ingram. And uh, with the power back, Ingram, and then, of course, the speedster, Gus, Gus Edwards. I mean, those two guys only had nine nine total carries. That's it, just not – That's not going to cut it. That's not winning football. And, um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, we, we everyone knew you have to stop Derrick Henry, you have to stop Derrick Henry, and he just he just lit another defense and, and, and tore, him, tore him to pieces. So, it, like I said, it was a complete team loss and a frustrating one at that. And – Probably the biggest upset of the playoffs, I, I think most people would agree. And maybe one of the biggest playoff upsets we've seen in, in a lot of years. Yeah, so let me ask you this before we move on. Do you think having three weeks off uh, was sort of an issue for Lamar Jackson plus the Ravens having at least a week off with the first round by? You know, I, I think that's tough because... It's really tough to say, man. <clears throat> I think as far as Lamar Jackson's concerned, you know, maybe, maybe he built up some rust during that time. Um, but, you know, the, I think the receivers are just as much to blame as him. You know, when you have more than eight or nine drops in a game, um, and especially, you know, six or seven right in the chest, right in the hands, um, that to me is rust. And, uh, you know, they, like I said, you know, I, I think I think I did I mention this to you that, that or I mentioned to my brother, maybe maybe it was Rust. Maybe it was that the time off that hurt the whole team that um you know, that famous Earl Earl Thomas quote where he said, you know, whoever we face in the Super Bowl uh is is gonna have a tough time or something along those lines. Um you know, I'm not superstitious about you know, stuff like that, but that that's uh I don't like dooming your team like that, especially when you um you still have other other games to play, so um, they they were rusty. Um, I I just think it's too early to tell if the if it if it hurt them. Or not. I mean, obviously it hurt them, yeah, because you know, they they were not sharp in any area. And Tennessee had the benefit of coming off a huge road win. I think uh, momentum has a lot to do with that because the Ravens, if the Ravens had played, you know, right after Week 17, they'd played a playoff game at their of course at their record they wouldn't have anyway. Um, unless something was cr- crazy were to, were to happen. But, you know, I, I, I think you build momentum as you go on through the playoffs. And and Tennessee had all the momentum. They had everything to prove. And they just came out and hammered us fair and square. I mean, um, and we did we did look a bit rusty. And it's it's strange. Um, you know, I, I've heard, peop- I heard people say, well, they shouldn't have arrested Lamar in Week 17. I, I disagree with that. You know, he doesn't need to get hurt in a game that they didn't really need to win. And RG3 played decent. I mean, he didn't play great, you know. <laughs> the, former, the former great Washington Redskins. Oh, my gosh. Um, Memories. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it. 
I think I think in hindsight it it, it could have hurt them. I mean, you only put up 12 points. So this has been one of the highest scoring offenses in the NFL this year. I think they were averaging like I think I heard like 33 points a game or something like that. And of course, a couple of those games were against like the Dolphins. Of course, they dropped uh, 59 or something on the Dolphins. So that helps the old average. But um, they they did look rusty to me, and they they just seemed like they weren't prepared. Um, and like I said, I don't like to say they were looking ahead to the AFC Championship game or further, but it just kind of seemed like it. Um, and they, they didn't put their money where their mouth was, I think, at the end of the day. Yep. Um, th- just heartbreaking for the Ravens. Yep. I'm, I feel sorry for them, you know, because I I will root for the Ravens. So, but Appreciate that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I'm glad we got that out of the way, Dan. Yeah, get it I, off my chest early yeah, here. Get it off your chest early. So let's move on to some football that we both really don't care about. Yeah. I mean, we care about it, but mm-hmm. none of them are our favorite teams anymore. Right. Uh, Minnesota and San Francisco. Captain Kirk, as you know, Kirk Cousins, um, made a statement against New Orleans, but yep. San Francisco uh, just ended their reign in the playoffs, 27-10. to 10. Um, Yeah, very... Exciting game towards the beginning, but then Arizona just... Why did I say Arizona? <laughs> same, sort of same color. Reverse Fra- records. <laughs> San Francisco, mm-hmm. but San Francisco just came back and dominated in the second half, and w- what a game it was. G- Jimmy it was G, one. Richard Sherman, they they all played well, and but S- San Francisco, they just had more firepower, more stars, and they wanted to win more. As I said earlier with Carlos, their rushing game was yeah, a factor in this game as yeah, well. Yeah, Tevin Coleman, I think, is is the reason they won this game. He had two touchdowns alone. Um, Garoppolo didn't play great. Um, but, of course, San Francisco's defense was as good as advertised, as good as they've been talked about all season. Um, you know, and this is – they were, you know, they were seven-point favorites coming into it. They won by 17. Um they were clearly the better team going in, and like I said, they just shut down Kirk Cousins. I mean, he didn't play poorly. I didn't think he played badly by any stretch of the imagination. You know, he had eight incompletions, a uh, touchdown and a pick, but he wasn't that impressive, but, you know, neither was Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, but he but he didn't have to be. I mean, they like I said, Tevin Coleman was just, they were just feeding him the rock, feeding him the rock, and, and expecting him to, to put the, to carry the offense, and he did. So, um and then you just you give you know San Francisco's defense a lead, Josh. They're 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 not going to lose it. I mean they're they're a solid defense from front to back. Richard Sherman played really well once yeah, again. Absolutely, he's he's been impressive. It's almost like he's been reignited as a member of the Forty ers Um, and so that's I'm I didn't used to like him, but I'm starting to like him now. I think he's I think he's a really solid player, and he, and he backs up most of his smack talk most of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know, um. Kirk Cousins didn't put on that big playoff performance that you know we thought he might, but but then again, I mean, they had a very tough tough assignment. You know, there was no, there was there was nothing easy in this game, and um, absolutely, San Francisco pretty much hand, manhandled them. Yes, it, it's going to be a very exciting uh, NFC Championship game for sure. Houston and Kansas City, the next game on our list, Dan. <sighs> What a game. What, like, what a game. I, I'm texting you about it, and you're saying you're on a bike ride, and I'm like, At the beginning of the game. Yeah, why are you day. riding your bike? And it I, was a I, beautiful day, man. Come on. Yeah, but uh, it was probably because they were up 24 to nothing. Then the Chiefs just stormed back, and yep. my goodness. never. I've never seen. I've never seen never anything seen a, like it. Nope. I've never seen a team go into the second quarter or uh, yeah, going into the second quarter, trailing twenty four nothing, and then scoring twenty eight points, and have the lead at halftime. Like that at is halftime. That, that is huge, that's folks. Unbelievable. If I didn't say that's, that earlier, that's never happened in the history of the NFL. Never. Oh my gosh. A team has never sc- scored. A team has never been trailing in by three scores. Or I think it was twenty one in the first quarter, and then leads by, or any quarter, I guess. And I I don't know. And anyway, it's it's historic. It's a historical significance. Yeah. Um. And Patrick Mahomes looked like he was playing on like beginner mode, on rookie mode, on Madden or something, dude. He was just on point with every throw. Every throw was was just 
right, right on target and wide open receivers. I mean, how many times was Travis Kelsey wide open? A and, lot. And he caught the ball with six or seven uh, yards of space around him. 134, 134 yards. yards. For him. He had 12 targets and he caught 10. You know, so. Yeah, you look at both these quarterbacks over 300 yards passing. Yep, yep. That's and ridiculous. It, and a lot of Deshaun Watsons came early on in the game. Well, I know, I guess. I, I mean, guess I guess he split it pretty evenly, but uh, you know the, those twenty four points were all quick strikes from from um, you know from Houston. They yeah. they scored. It was a block punt, an, uh, an interception. They had or no, not an interception. A fumble, would they get like a fumble or something? I don't yeah, know. yeah, some sort of turnover. Yeah, there was I, a turnover of some sort. There was like two things that happened, and then you know they were they were able to build that lead then the se- the, the second quarter the chiefs put up 28 points they just pu- forced them to punt then them only to punt. 7 points scored by the texans in the second half mhm i mean uh, i mean going into halftime i would think you would make some sort of adjustment but yeah. they just looked shell shocked i mean they looked like they had lost all the wind in their sails i mean and i think most teams would i i think pretty much every team would josh when you have a twenty-four nothing lead and you blow it, by the end of the quarter you give up four straight touchdowns, and I mean those were quick drives. Uh, I I watched, um, I I that's about the time I started watching was when it was like twenty-four to th- twenty-four to seven or something or mm-hmm. or twenty. It, it might have been twenty-four nothing, and they had um, what was it a fake punt or something? Houston tried to run. They, yeah, they did something really dumb and then gave them the ball at like the five yard line. So I mean they had a short drive there. Um, but like, Kansas City was just unbelievable. They were just touchdown, 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 and their their defense nonstop. Their defense got to give them a heck a heck ton of credit. You know, um, it's <laughs> it's just unbelievable, man. I've I've never seen a playoff game like that. And like I said, Patrick Mahomes had one of the most impressive uh, performances that I've I've ever seen in my lifetime in a playoff game. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it, indeed. That was a 51-31 to 31 Kansas City Chiefs when they're back in the AFC Championship game. I couldn't believe. I couldn't, I couldn't believe I was watching that. I couldn't believe the final score. I couldn't believe how many times I watched them score touchdowns. Yeah. Seven straight drives of, with, with touchdowns, which is also an NFL record. Um, Absolutely. So, they're, they're a fantastic team. Absolutely. Moving right along... Um, in a game I sort of expected, Green Bay beating Seattle 28-23. Mm-hmm. to 23. Carlos and I talked about this in the first segment. Um, you know, Green Bay's off scoring, you know, um, 14, 21 points in the first half, then only second, uh, seven points in the second half. So Green Bay, like, m- making their halftime adjustments, they're just trying to hold the Seahawks from winning and they're not scoring any point. The in the Seahawks, they just looked like from this the this set of playoffs, uh, this set of playoff games that they just did not look like the Seahawks. Like Russell mm-hmm. Wilson only one passing touchdown. Yeah, he has Russell been. Wilson does not look like Russell Wilson and I've seen this for the past two or three games. Yeah, I I I go back at least 3 weeks to when he yeah. started to, to decline um because i mean if you remember you know mid- midway through the season he was he and lamar were neck and neck i mean a lot of people uh-huh. are talking about the mvp race and he was right there but yeah he kind of kind of you know f- flickered out i guess you'd say but i mean this is this is what the packers do i mean they 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 build a big lead which you know they had a 21 to 3 halftime lead i thought the game was for sure over i thought there was no chance seattle would come back um but give credit to the seahawks i mean they played a lot better in the second half they just they had you know, too big of a hill to climb, I think, to get out of it. And and Aaron Jones, I mean, they just kept giving him the ball, and and he's a really solid back. He's done a fantastic job for the Packers. Um, yeah, I think I think they can win. I think they can get to the Super Bowl. Honestly, they're 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 good enough. But Rogers just the throws he makes. He made one beautiful, yeah, arcing throw that was perfect. I mean, you couldn't place a ball any better than that and I was just sitting there saying oh my god I can't I can't believe that like on a line I, for, I forget who he threw it to but I was just like only Rodgers can make that throw there's only one quarterback in the NFL who could throw a ball like that right now and it's Aaron Rodgers yeah I um, I, I will he, leave you with this 
Okay. Aaron Rodgers will show up for the NFC Championship game. I think I yeah, think it's a good game. You can never count Aaron Rodgers out. Nope. Nope. And you know, I I, I don't really think anybody's a a better passer overall. I don't think anyone's a better passer than he is in the NFL right now. Um, and maybe in the last, you know, six or seven years. I think that can be debated. But I mean just just the passes he makes, they're on target, the accuracy and just the precision that he throws the football, there's there's nobody better right now in the NFL at doing that the things he does. And um, and he can carry the Packers far, but, you know. But like you said, I'm gonna g- go to Seattle real quick. They just their offense was just they started slow and they they just really never found it. They they had a pretty good stroke going there in the third quarter where they scored two touchdowns, but never really, you know, they, they were never really able to pick it up and 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 get back in that game. So you know, the Packers have a well earned win. They 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 deserve to be in the game. I think a lot of people picked them because you know, playoff game in Lambeau, it's freezing there. Um, and Seattle just looked shell shocked early. They almost came back, but got to give credit to the Packers. They made the stops when they needed to and did what they had to do to win this game. Absolutely. So the stage is set. Yep. One last weekend. Unbelievable. Of football before the Super Bowl. It's been Where a is it long, gone? Is long the time gone? Ri- ride this year on the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. The stage is set, Dan, so let's give our predictions. Okay. NFC and AFC championship games. Who do you got? Got the Chiefs in the AFC. Um, <clears throat> I, th- I think this is a pretty good game early on. I, th- I, th- I think it's a close game for a- about a quarter and a half, maybe maybe for the first half. Uh, but I think Kansas City, the way their offense is playing right now, I mean they're gonna they're gonna come out in the second half and just roll the Titans, and they might not score 51 points in this game because I think uh, Tennessee's defense is a little bit better than um, than people give them credit for. Um, but I I I think it's a it's a 17 point victory or so for for Kansas City. I think they win pretty handily, um, so I like them at home. Picking Andy Reid to go back to the Super Bowl for the for the second time, so that would be nice for Andy Reid. Yeah, I like I like Andy Reid a lot. I think I think uh, great coaching well deserved. style. Yeah, it would be well. He's deserved. a mentor. He's yeah. he's a mentor to all the all the coaches around him, which uh-huh. is so rare now. Um, it's, it's it's so rare in the NFL. You don't see that at all. And the NFC. Ooh, this is this is a tougher one for me to pick. The NFC is always tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean. We all know what happened during the season when this game happened. The 49ers won like 37 to 8. Steamrolled them. Yep. And I'll go back to what Carlos said. The last two times Green Bay was on the West Coast, they lost to both San Francisco and the Chargers. Yep. I mean So that I mean that's but that's not pl- good. They don't have history on their side. But playoff Aaron Rodgers. That's true. You have he's to different. think of that. He's a different he's a different animal in the playoffs. Um this is tough for me. No, 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 no. I'm going with the upset. I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Packers. The Packers. I think, I think it's, I think it's a shootout. I think the Packers kick a field goal, either with time running out or in overtime or something, and they win. Um, let me. I'm not going to give a score, but I, no. I think it's, I think it's a three. Scores point are win. too hard. Yeah, that's very hard to do. Yeah, but so. Going back to history, the Chiefs and the Packers, a lot of history mm-hmm. in the early yeah. days of the Super Bowl. So that would be nice. For That's me, true. I am picking on the AFC side. I think it's going to be a shootout, but I think the Chiefs have it on the AFC side. But the Chargers, I would, excuse me, the Titans, I would not be surprised if they upset the Chiefs. I would not be. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't either. Honestly, I did, I I would. Exp- you know, I, I'm not surprised by anything anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's going to be a close, close game. A number one against a number two seed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's tough for me to do this, but uh, I I think it's going to be San Francisco in the shootout. I think the 49ers have what it takes, and I, I think it just comes down to a last-minute play. But yet again, history shows through the regular season that the 49ers did steamroll the Packers. Yep. So it could change, but this is a very unique 
conference championship weekend. So, and you got to give credit to what John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have been able to do there. I mean, absolutely. Um, they've built a, a heck of a team out there, and they could be winners for years to come. And you know, the Packers, we've seen them before in this in these games in these big in these NFC Championship games. So, um, like you said, both teams deserve to be in the Super Bowl. I think. Um, and I think that's going to be the more exciting of the two games. Yeah, absolutely. And I totally forgot to mention this on the this episode. Um, the NFC Championship game features not one, but two former Redskins coaches. Yep. Matt LaFleur and Kyle Shanahan. Shows how bad the Redskins organization is. Matt LaFleur and Kyle Shanahan have been together through the Texans organization the Redskins, I want I I don't know the third team off the top of my head. I shared Atl- it. Atlanta, right? Yes, Atlanta. Because Thank I know you. Kyle Shanahan was it, in Atlanta. It was Atlanta. Then mm-hmm. they split head coach Green Bay is Matt LaFleur. Head coach San Francisco is Kyle Shanahan. They're both great coaches. Hey, it, it's gonna be a great weekend. It's gonna be a really, really great weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you are I'm, as well. Well, with my team had been here, it would be a little bit better. But yes, I'm still looking forward to it. Hey, you know, I'm have not to bitter stress. at all. I'm not bitter at all. You don't have to stress about it at least. That's true. God, my blood pressure was <laughs> soaring during that. Oh uh, uh, yeah, most definitely. So. I mean, I I feel like it was. Uh, I I just felt so bad for you. Yeah, I felt so bad. It, it, it was a rough night. Moving on to the NCAA. LSU defeats Clemson, as I said earlier. Dan, what are your thoughts on LSU winning all of their national championships in Louisiana? Yeah, that's that's something. That's a that's a nice little stat there. Good job. Yeah. LSU, they put together one of the most impressive seasons I've I've seen. They beat um I gotta think of the stat now. Seven seven teams they beat were ranked in the top ten at the time they beat them. I've never seen that. I've never seen that in my lifetime. Um, first of all, their schedule, their strength of schedule, has to be number one. If it's yeah. not, it's not in the top five, because not not many teams. Of course, playing in the SEC, they play the best competition, which which helps. Their, and they uh, beat Alabama. Yep, and they they which finally was huge. they finally got the monkey off their back, beating Alabama. Um, that was that was a fun game. Um, but you know, I, I Joe Burrow's. Incredible, dominant. He's incredible, dominant, um, all, all the way around, dominant. There is no chance that he goes more than number two. I, in the draft. I and I agree, and I think the Bengals have pretty much already made their pick. They're they're definitely going to take probably. Their, they're going to take the Ohio kid, Joe Burrow. So Man. it fits it fits pretty well. But he's got an exceptional arm. He's to me, he looks like he looks like a NFL quarterback now. He looks like he could play in the NFL now. Um, if they, you know, if the Bengals do it right, hopefully they do. Even though he's in our division, which makes me nervous, but um, he's gonna he's gonna be a great quarterback, and he's just the season he had. Um, I've never seen anything like it. You know, by far the best player in college football this year, and probably college football, maybe not of all time, but you got to put him up there, right? As far as like single season performances by a player. Joe Burrow has got to be up there. Yeah, it, it was just great to see another team make it to the top besides Alabama. It was very I great. Totally agree. And it was great Saban not having was him in there that to game. watch him win. Man, his face. He, he looked so, <laughs> so distraught, man. He looked the... so happy to be on that pregame show. <laughs> yeah, he was just like, mm, I don't want to be here. Wait, wait, why was Nick Saban at the national championship if Alabama wasn't playing? <laughs> I can't believe he agreed to do it. Yeah, I was surprised. When I saw I him, I was very, like, are you serious? very surprised. Oh, my god! I was very, very surprised. And um, other news from the national championships. Yes, Odell Beckham was on the sideline. Mm. He apparently gave Joe Burrow cash. Several players, yeah. Odell Beckham has a warrant for his arrest via Louisiana police for smacking a security guard on the rear end going into the Tigers' locker room. Yep. 
What a joke. Yeah, that, I don't that's know. all I'm gonna say. What a <laughs> joke. Seriously, what a joke. I mean, he he had to know that wasn't a good idea, right? I mean, you don't. First Who of all, in you their right mind does that? First of all, you don't do that to someone you don't know. Number one, I and I would assume he doesn't know the officer. I I don't know for sure. I can't confirm nor deny. But and it's a police officer. Why would you? Why would you think that's a good idea? He must have been drunk or something. He has to have some excuse. Some excuse. But, uh, unbelievable. I was just like, I mean, uh, we're I not, saw that today and I was like, this has to be like a, a prank article or something. It has to be like the Onion. But nope, it was a real thing, and they had the video. Um, we'll have to share that. We have to share that on Twitter or something if we can find it. Um, yeah, I did not see the video. Yet. <laughs> it's just, it's just like you know, a congratulatory like you know, you slap someone's butt. Yeah, but. <laughs> It, it it wasn't like he was trying to you know weigh him like smack him. It's, but it's still he still smacked him. Well, he's wanted. He still smacked for, him. He's wanted for simple assault. I mean, yeah, he hit he hit a police officer. Yeah. So, it's it's just the guy can't stay out of his own way. Um, he was just too crazy. He yeah. Who led him on the sidelines? Like for real? Well, you know, he's he's pretty much a legend at LSU. I mean. The stuff he did there was had never been seen before, and then of course what he did early on in his career not so and much. Booger recently. was on the sidelines too. Yeah, I think Booger went to LSU as well. Yeah, but still yeah. Booger. <laughs> well, he's he's a high profile guy. They'll they'll take the high profile people and put them on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah, you know? but but still all the criticism he gets for all the stuff. Oh, he's definitely Monday gonna get he's definitely gonna get let go. They're they're already trying to replace him. I've heard Tony Romo, and someone said... Um, I heard ESPN will make Tony Romo Tony Romo, one of the biggest offers of all time. The offer. biggest offer of all time. Ten, that, ten million. That would be ama- That mm-hmm. would be huge. And who's but, the other one? But if Tony leaves CBS... Hold on, Corey sent it to me. Hold on. That would be... That, that would just be crazy, because Jim Nance and Tony Romo just pair so perfectly together. They just feed off each other. Yeah. And, that was one thing that you just don't see with many announcers. You don't see like this sort of f- friendship, you know, come out there. Oh, yeah. And they they seem to have it, and it's it's a special thing when you can find that. In, hey, in a in a in a broadcast. Unfortunately, so. this year Tony Roma will only make it to the AFC Championship game. <laughs> yeah. You Not were- the Super Bowl, Tony. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. All right. So moving on. Um. What we want to talk some baseball news now. I know you have some harsh thoughts on this topic. Oh yeah. For everybody involved, the Houston Astros, they're cracking down. They're cheating scandal for stealing signs um, during their 2017 World Series run. Um, they're accused of stealing signs through the iPads and players wearing buzzers on them and when the buzzer sounds they're getting tipped that Hold on. a uh, pitch happens. I have new news. This is six minutes ago. Uh oh. Major League Baseball. No evidence Astros use wearable devices to aid sign stealing. Oh. Okay. So that that part of it probably not, but the trash cans and all that, yeah. That's that's true. Yeah, well, I, I mean... Unbelie- it's, it's still unbelievable. Yeah, I, I mean, the information about it, I don't have all the details. There's so much out there still. I, I I haven't really read much other than, like, bits and pieces here and there about But it. still, it has been a huge piece of news because the Astros fired their manager, mm-hmm. fired their GM, yep. the Red Sox fired their head coach over it, the Mets just fired their head coach over it. Yeah, they were they, they were all involved in some way. Yeah, and, they, and you manager, know, excuse me, not head coach. Yeah, I knew what you, I knew what you meant. But <laughs> what? Wow, like that's three managers out of the major league gone, and they're in. Um, AJ Hinch. AJ Hinch yep. is suspended a year. On top of that, so I I mean the. This may tarnish his reputation. Oh, are you kidding? Of course. Yeah, he might not find another manager job after this. And you know what's also funny? The Nationals beat them in the World Series. That's all I have to say. The Nationals beat They couldn't beat cheat them. in that World Series, could Poetic they? Poetic justice, baby. Poetic justice. Yeah. 
And what's even funnier, the Nats and the Astros share a spring training complex. Ooh, that is awkward. I know. Wow. That is ballpark of the Palm Beaches or I, something like that. But <laughs> the Nats and the Astros share a ballpark, mm. share a facility. That's going to be so awkward. And, you know, pitchers and catchers are reporting soon. It's unbelievable. They're already reporting. <laughs> it's crazy. It yeah, is this, crazy. This whole thing's a mess. It's it's uh, it's such a mess. I mean, well, we need to just go on a different episode and unpack it all. It's just I mean, so we crazy. Could, we could spend a whole episode just talking about this. Yeah. You know. The Houston Astros. And there's st- I think there's still uh, not a lot of information out there cuz everybody's pretty much saying the same thing about this. Um so I think as the months go on and we see more and more especially as baseball season gets closer, there'll be more information that comes out, there'll be more investigation investigations done by Probably the probably Major League Baseball and probably you know an outside sort of legal counsel sort of thing. And there might be more punishment. There might be more punishment. Down. That yeah, exactly right. And I think I was just about to say that you know this, the, you know just because the 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 MLB has made their decision right now doesn't mean that's that's it. You know we still have players involved who were extremely involved in this process who we haven't really. Heard too many names. Of course, Justin. What was it? Justin Verlander. Yeah. Something the, said that he knew there was what was going on about him. Yeah. 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 And of course, he's a high-profile player. So uh-huh. gonna, there's going to be a lot of investigation into that. It's just, it's just a mess. It, you know, it's, it's, it's cheating. You know, and cheating. baseball, baseball has had quite the black eye uh, over over the years. Of course, the steroid use, um, and and now this. I mean. There was a couple years there where there really wasn't many there there wasn't any scandals but it seems like every you know 10 or 15 years there's one that comes along and it's it seems to always hit baseball. Yeah. Um and why baseball? I have no idea going why. Going all the way sport. back to P Rose. Yeah. Uh, going back to the the uh Lifetime the Black band. Sox scandal when they when they threw the the 19 uh, 19 World Series. Oh yeah. And with uh of course that had to do with uh, gambling and stuff then but yeah of course of course Pete Rose a lot of people are bringing that up now and saying that these guys who have been found guilty of this stuff should be banned just like him. Yeah. Because what he did was, you know, was tiny compared to the stuff uh-huh. they did. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So I think the title should be vacated. That's that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. I know, I, it's, I know it's a hot take, and I know it's... It's a hot take from Dan Dembski on the podcast. Shh, cue flame sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Because, I mean, they, you know, they, they, they openly admitted they did it, and... You know, it's it's just a, it's cheating. <laughs> I mean, and look, you know, sign, teams have been stealing signs for years. You know, but you, but you do it the right way. You know, you the right um, way. You Is don't, there a right way if the MLB I mean, says it's wrong? Ethically, no. You know, but there's there's ways teams have done it in the past, and you you don't use the technology we have um, to further look into that. That's that that that's that's what makes all of it worse. Was that they had. A camera and a TV and all that other stuff. So, um, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's <laughs> basically all I think. I mean, like I said, I think we need to hear more come out in the coming months because it's it's only January and and this stuff will ramp up again, um, especially when spring training gets back. Excuse me, in March and we start to see more of the uh, February, Dan. February, February. I'm sorry, I'm Jeez. used to it being March. Almost a month away. Come on. Okay. Time for your Orioles to lose more games. That's that's why I don't know when it is because I uh, I didn't I didn't watch all last season pretty much because <laughs> the Orioles were they're going to be just as bad this year. So. All right. Well, anyway, I, I, I'm moving gonna, on. I'm going to leave the um, listeners with one last piece of news. Yeah. I, 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 we're not going to go into depth about this because I, I don't give a crap. You don't give a <laughs> crap. Antonio Brown <laughs> is no longer have an agent. He no longer mm-hmm. has an agent. Rightfully so. After that video surfaced on Twitter of him cursing out, um, yeah, police a, officers, he will never be in the league again. Nope. I guarantee that. Oh no, he definitely won't. He's burned. He's done more than burned burned his bridges. I mean, he has destroyed the city that they lived in, pretty uh-huh. much. I mean, he is, uh, you know, one week he says he 
he said the NFL screwed him over, da 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 da, and then he's begging the NFL to take him back, and then the tirade, cussing at those, cussing at his, uh, the I guess, I guess it's his, what is it, his girlfriend or yeah, some his girlfriend it was or her his kids, kid. and and cussing out the cop. I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, he needs, he needs help. He needs mental help. Hey, um, I'll, I'll tell you this. This is another hot take. Okay. Antonio Brown is worse than Colin Kaepernick. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh huh. There's no doubt about it. I don't care what anybody says. It's it, not even close. Yeah, not even close. I mean, this guy has done. What's Colin Kaepernick doing? Right now, you he's don't not hear doing anything. He's not. He's not insane. He's not mentally insane like he Antonio just Brown. had a workout. And nobody ever called him, but yeah. Well, I think that's for more more reasons than one, but it's just. But still, you're not hearing about Colin Kaepernick every other week. In the no, race. he's not. He's not going Instagram live and 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 cussing people out and and saying, uh, you know, the NFL. That I mean, he's he's criticized the NFL. I mean, and and maybe some of it for for you know for uh, for decent reasons, but you know, he's not like Antonio Brown. I've never seen anybody like this before. Never. 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 And it's. It's sad because you think of the player he he was and how, especially early on in his career, how important he was to that Steeler team. I mean, it's it's sad really, but he needs help. He needs first of all he needs to get off Twitter because <laughs> his tweets are. I follow him because it's it's entertaining for me. Really? Yes. He's you don't a, try he's good, to get yourself blocked. No, you should do that. I've done that with OJ Simpson already on Twitter, and but actually, did it work? I did not get blocked. No. Oh, he man. pretty much blocks everyone though. So, <laughs> but but he would be on there all day trying to block people because the comments on his anything he tweets. Anyway, same thing with Antonio Brown. I mean, it's it's gotten out of control, and he he literally he he does need like psychiatric help, and I'm not saying that to like you know be funny or anything like that. Like it's it's serious. It's serious. Yeah, but that that was one piece of news I just wanted to put out there. But that's all the time we have. Dan, thank you for coming on the second part of the podcast Thanks today. Thanks for having me again, man. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, hey, it's been a lot of fun on break indeed. These few weeks I've been home, man. I've enjoyed coming on the show and it being here in studio when I can. and uh, On the phone when you can. I'm looking forward to <laughs> being on the phone more this coming semester, man. Hopefully. I'm ready to do it. And... It's not set in stone yet, but we will be doing a podcast in Blacksburg. Yes. I don't know when, Most but definitely. we will be doing a podcast in Blacksburg. Hopefully here soon. I don't have all the details, but we most work it definitely out. Dan Dembski, Josh Kirby live from Blacksburg. So That's exciting, Set man. that on your calendars. February As, sometime, right? Is that what you're looking for? I'm not sure yet. Not set in stone. Well, well we're going to... I'll work with you. How we're, about that? We're, we'll take a look and see. All right, man. As always, we're part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network, brought to you by Route 11 Chips. Make sure you find a bag today inside your local Martins, Food Lion, and Giant stores. We're also sponsored by PM Plus Reserves. Thanks, as always, to Dave Johnson, JR Beats Official, and MPT Now Productions. You can find us on all streaming platforms via the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast and the Mayo Please Podcast Network, and you can find us on all social media platforms. Till the next episode, for Dan Dembski, I'm Josh Kirby. So long and peace out.